It's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer. We got another beer sent from Chris and Steve. Chris being from America, Steve being in Manchester, UK. Between them, they send me some wonderful, wonderful craft beer on the channel. And I thank them. I really thank them for this. Uh, this beer is from the UK. This is by Rivington Brewing Company. And this is their Blood Machines Double IPA coming in at 8% ABV in a 500 milliliter can. I They brewed a festival beer uh, last year, 2021 that I reviewed on the channel and it was fabulous, fabulous. It was the first beer I had from Rivington Brewing Company and I was shouting from the rooftops for that particular beer. So hopefully, that was the postman posting some stuff through the door, make sure he's not gonna knock. Yeah, he's not gonna knock, is he? He would have knocked by now. Um, hopefully this follow-up beer that I'm trying is gonna be just as good as the beer I had last year, fingers crossed. Prices on the can there. It's six pound ninety-five if you if you fancy purchasing uh, this beer. Uh, let's go. Let's get it out into a glass. See what we get. There's some lovely hidden gems of brewers in the UK. Some of them have, over the last year, last two years got quite kind of well known and still producing great beer. I'm gonna use the kind of overtone as one. Absolutely fantastic, incredible brewing company up there in Glasgow, uh, Rivington, doing, doing some great things, but I, I don't think they're, at least from where I'm standing over here in Wales, um, I think they're a the hidden gem. I don't think they're as well known as, as they're probably going to be over the next couple of years. But look at this. Look at this for the beer. We've got a one finger white head, very small one finger white head, slow moving carbonation. Looks like soup, doesn't it? Gloop, hop, gloop. Great, look at that. Let's get the aroma. Um, oh, first of all, colour is hazy, straw coloured aroma. Yeah, just incredible. Passion fruit, mango, grapefruit, orange peel, fleshy blood orange. Just, just, just simply, simply stunning. Oh. Oh. Oh, I'm going again. I'm going again. Oh. Stone the crows. Stone the crows. What a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous beer. Tinned pineapple. You know, you get your, I haven't had tinned pineapple in years, but I know exactly what it tastes like. You get the pineapple rings, don't you, in a, in a tin. And it's in syrup. So you get all of that kind of lovely syrupy sweetness, and then you get that kind of pineapple taste. That's exactly what you're getting in this beer. Tin pineapple. Passion fruit, mango, orange peel, fleshy blood orange. It's leaning, I would say, it's leaning towards being sweeter. Definitely than being bitter. Um, it 
but it's simply stunning. It's simply, simply stunning. Stone the Crows. Stone the Crows, what a beer. Oaty, creamy, mouthfeel is incredible. It's, it's, there's a little bit of stickiness there from the oats. The oats offer up a creaminess and that creaminess lets the beer stick on the palate a little bit. As it sticks on the palate, you've got taste buds all over your mouth, from your tongue to the top of your mouth, insides of the cheeks, back of the throat. And it just offers up a wonderful kind of crescendo of hops in the beer and on your palate. That passion fruit, that mango, that grapefruit, that orange peel, that fleshy blood orange. It's like it's like dunking your head in a in a punch bowl at a, at a wedding party. That's what I'm picking up from the beer. It is so good. It's so relaxing. It's so like. Oh, wow, you know, just enjoying it, just enjoying it, just standing here. It doesn't even feel like I'm reviewing a beer right now. It just feels like I'm I'm standing in a bar, loving a beer, enjoying a beer with friends. Because I say with friends, because I do read the comments. I do kind of like and love most of the comments that come in for the videos. And I do read most of the comments for the for the videos that I post during the day. Um, so, so yeah, yeah, I'm kind of drinking this with, with, with friends of the channel here and looking forward to your comments on this one because what I want to know is, have you guys tried Rivington Brewing Company? Have you tried their beer? Because it is smashing, absolutely smashing, smashing beer. It really is. I'm, I'm able now to roll the beer around in the glass and really get a great aroma now of this beer. My goodness me, the aroma is just incredible. Just fantastic. But I got a question. Here's my question. Some of the best beers I've tried over the last few years have been New England IPAs, double New England IPAs. Uh, and, but it's probably the same for the majority of people who have been watching the channel and enjoying the channel and drinking great beer. The, 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 I would say that the, the biggest beer style to come across or to come along over the last five or six years has been this New England style IPA. My question is, I'm quite a big fan of Dragon's Den. I watch quite a lot of it when it's on, of course, on the BBC. And um, you you see these companies going on, pitching to the, the Dragons and saying, oh, we've come up with this brand new thing, this great new thing. And, and I've seen people like, going on to you know they, they they caught on to hard seltzer in america that's, that's selling like the bucket load over there but it hasn't kind of made it over here yet if it ever will um I, i'm dubious i'm dubious by the way on hard seltzer i, I typically but on a personal level i would I, I don't like it i've had a few from um ab inbev and it was it was atrocious stuff this this hard seltzer anyway my point is um these people come in and they were pitching for x amount of money uh, on Dragon's Den to talk about kind of their hard seltzer and it's going to be the next big thing in the UK and it's going to take the alcohol market by storm and blah 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 blah. Here's my question. Why isn't anyone thinking along those lines with this style of beer? With New England IPA? Lots and lots and lots of people drink it. Is there an opportunity to go there's, there's going to be like a New England IPA brand who brew not just any old New England IPA. I mean, this sort of top, top quality New England IPA that takes the country by storm. Or takes the, the drinking, the alcohol market around the world by storm. 
That's my question. I would say the only thing holding me back, and this is where I'm kind of observing what they kind of say on Dragon's Den, is you see sometimes where they talk about price points, where especially that Tuka guy, when, when they kind of say, oh, it costs um, £45 to buy this in the shop. And he's like, ooh, you know, he's like, oh, I can make that. I can make that for a fiver in India type of thing. Um, or China, and I could I could have it on the shelf for a fiver. Um, my only my only thing would be would be that six pound ninety five price point. Is that the barrier to entry for making this style of beer well known all over the world? Is it that six pound ninety five price point? And will we ever be in a situation where there's enough hop fields? To catch up with the demand that we need for hops. To bring the price down for hops. So, eventually we get to the point where you can buy a can of Rivington Blue Blood Machines Double IPA for £3 a can on the shelf. And would that, would that make a difference? <coughs> Are we just in that kind of growth phase where... There's just not enough hop fields and there's too much demand for hops. And when the hop fields and when we finally produce enough hops for the demand, is there then the possibility to, to, to make this whole kind of beer thing that we all know could go worldwide and massive? And known by your Joneses, if, that's, if that makes sense, like known by Mrs. Jones down the road. They're the type of people I think that, that that really kind of could be drinking this craft beer. Are we in that kind of? Or, or my my question to you would be: When will that happen? When will that happen? When good old Mrs. Jones, who's been living down the road for forty years, goes goes and buys a New England IPA and loves it? Or am I just barking up the wrong tree? And it'll never happen. And it will always be a slightly niche product. Anyway, I'm ready to rate this. Um, I went on a booming tangent then, I was talking about all sorts of stuff. But um, I think what I was talking about was very important for the industry. Let's rate this. Love it. Absolutely love it. I think the fact that I went on that tangent and was talking about that very subject was because I want... I want Mrs Jones down the road to be drinking this time of New England IPA because I'm sure she'd love it. I like that enough to give the Stone the Crows 9 out of 10. It's a 9 out of 10 from Real Ale Craft Beer. Um, a little bit about the beer then. Double IPA brewed with Citra, Idaho 7, Galaxy and Ozako Cryo. Drink fresh. Um, contains wheat and barley. Water, barley, wheat, oats, hops and yeast. Um, where are they from? I'm interested to know. Rivington Brewing Company. Where, do, where are they from? Lancashire. Chorley in Lancashire. Love it. 9 out of 10. Please put your comments in the comments box. Again, thank you to, to Chris and Steve for sending us the beer. Thanks for watching. Boom. Cheers.